It's Tuesday afternoon, 4 p.m. in Central Europe, and it's Space Café Web Talk time, or Space Café today. 33 minutes with Adnan Al Muheri will begin very soon. We like also to thank Yasa for their special support for this program today. And thanks for joining us today for our talk about why next gen, the Suraya program. As always, we appreciate your participation and ongoing feedback. Space Watchdog Global is a Europe-based online platform for information in about space and new space activities in a geopolitical context. And I would like to thank all our private and corporate supporters that showed their commitment to keeping our independent journalism alive. We really appreciate that. I know many of you are already familiar with our website, our bi-weekly and daily newsletters and the Space Cafe podcast. The last one featured um, Moriba Ja, and it's another outstanding talk with one of the rock stars our industry has. We also have new exciting episodes in the Space Cafe radio with Lynn Sönen or Charlotte Bewig, but more to come. We have a huge backlog in the, in the radio production. So we also keep our fan shop open online for you to support us actively to become a space watcher. And if you've missed any of our previous web talks, we have an archive available on our webpage in the events section and on YouTube. So, my guest today is Adnan Al Morheri. And as you can see, he is not with me in the studio. So, we had to record our talk shortly before we broadcast it here today. So, Adnan is the Chief Technology Officer of YASAT and has had a distinguished career in the space industry. He was part of the development program in South Korea as a research and development engineer on the UAE's first successful remote sensing spacecraft, Dubai Sat-1 and Dubai Sat-2. He also worked on the UAE's first communication our spacecrafts, Alia-1 and Alia-2. And he was the program director of the Alia-3 space communication systems, a highly advanced space network that expanded YASAT's uh, yeah, click services into Brazil. And in 2020, Adnan was featured by the US-based Space and Satellite Professional International SSPI organization on their previous R20 under 30, 35 list of most promising space and satellite professionals in the world. He is the first Emirati male space and satellite professional to be handpicked by SSPI for the honor. Adnan obtained a um, Bachelor in Avionics Engineering Management from the Higher College of Technologies, and then he completed an intensive course in Satellite Systems Engineering in South Korea before completing master class training in Frequency Coordination at RPC Telecommunications. That was followed by ground station operation and maintenance training at Viasat in the US before he earned an MBA from the Global Executive Program at the Mac Donna School of Business from Georgetown University in DC. And now he is here in our show today. Enjoy our conversation. Adnan, great to have you in our Space Cafe today. Last week, Abu Dhabi saw another amazing aerospace summit, I guess. Or I think you attended the show. How was it? So how do you see the general market right now? Yeah, it was a, it was a fantastic show, really. It was... Um held at a very nice venue at the Emirates Palace in Abu Dhabi. Uh, quite a large attendance, uh, in fact, that came. And it was a great opportunity to meet with our industry partners. And it was a great opportunity for uh, some members of our team at Tiasa to participate in the various panels that were being held at that time. That sounds, sounds pretty, pretty amazing. I mean, Emirates Palace is always an iconic place to have a meeting there as far as I remember. So coming back to, to the talk today, you are, and I quote here, one of the most promising space leaders from the UAE. So tell us your story. So why space for you? Um, yeah, well, I mean, whoever said that was was very kind. So that's, uh, that's very nice of them. Um, so space, uh, well, I, I started off, you know, um, really with a, a big interest in aerospace engineering. 
and that was the basis for my studies. And I've been very fortunate that the UAE gave me the opportunity to join the space industry right out of university. So I joined a program in South Korea, which was actually Dubai Sat 1, Dubai Sat 2, which was really? focused on uh, remote sensing. So uh, I lived there for three years and I worked on those projects. Um, then I had uh, a great opportunity to work on the UAE's first uh, hybrid communication satellites, which was Alia 1, Alia 2. And I worked on those uh, in France for several years. And then I worked on high throughput satellites based in the US for uh, approximately three or four years as well. And many other projects, uh, including uh, government programs that that were very interesting. So my whole uh, career has been in space and, and I really do enjoy it. I believe the opportunities in space are as infinite as space itself. And I think we are constantly scratching the surface in this domain. Absolutely. So it sounds that you have been part of this first cohort that really gets their hands on, on the stuff. So Salam and Mari and I think he was at the same time with you then in, in Korea, correct? Yes, yes. Saddam is a very good friend and uh, we had great experience in, in Korea there. Yes, that's correct. Cool. Can you give us a 90 second elevator pitch about Yasat and Suraya? Because you're still keeping these two brands under one umbrella. So maybe you can help us and our audience to understand what is behind it. Sure. Um, so Yasat, I mean, Yasat's a relatively young company. We were established in 2007. Um, Soraya joined Yasat in 2018 when we were part of the company. And today we operate as one company uh, under one roof, um, integrating the, the teams and the services that Yasat and Soraya provide. So, um, we, you know, together we cover over 150 countries around the world. We provide uh, services in L band, C band, the U band, A band commercial, A band government. And we do this with a fleet of satellites. We have uh, five satellites that have quite a significant coverage, really, all the way from uh, Brazil to Australia. So, um, Everything, you know, so with the combined combination of Toraya and Yasat together, uh, we can serve pretty much any any solution that a customer desires from, you know, low, low data rate, secure communications, all the way to very high throughput communications. I see. So, I mean, you're, as you mentioned, are 2007 uh, uh, founded, there is some heritage. What is Yasat as a whole contributing to the UAE space or especially satellite sector these days? I mean, UAE defines space as one of the areas to grow. So, I mean, you're well placed. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, I mean, in, in the communication services that Yasat provides to the UAE as well as the wider company, I mean, that in itself is essential, it is critical. I mean, connectivity today is, is, uh, is one of the most important um, aspects of the capabilities of any nation. So having all this capability within the Yasat, within the UAE is, as a start, very important. Secondly, Yasat, at the Yasat, we do participate a lot in development. We work a lot with academia, we work the Hanif University where we established the Yasat Space Lab. We have a master's degree program there. The students uh, are constantly developing new CubeSats. So they've, they've designed, launched, and uh, operated CubeSats uh, out of Abu Dhabi. Um, so really the, the, the contribution is so important. And just going back to connectivity as an example, I mean, during the lockdown, there were uh, students that couldn't get to school and the only way they could join school remotely was actually through satellite communication that were provided uh, by the UAE, by YASA. So there, there are numerous examples of, of the importance of 
the space capability within the UAE. And then the, the, the growth of capabilities, the growth of knowledge within the, the economy, within the country, uh, it's very important for uh, the next generation of, of students, of engineers, and we, we believe in that strongly. It sounds amazing. Our topic is next generation. So why are we seeing satellite operators switching to the next gen satellites and networks? I mean, it's all established, it's, it works. So why, why now? Yeah, so fundamentally, this comes down to uh, really providing our customers and our partners the best service possible with continuous improvement. I mean, that is always our goal uh, at Yasat. And we believe that it is, in, it is necessary to move to next generation satellites because the demand is there. The customers need higher throughput, which we provide through our next gen satellites. Our customers need uh, higher security as well. And another important feature is uh, significant, significantly improved flexibility as well. So we want to be very um, agile in accommodating any of our customers' needs very quickly. So they, if they need a service in a particular area with a specific solution or a different area, we can accommodate that very quickly. And that is important for next-gen satellites to have all those features available. Let's talk about all these cool features. So what is unique in your plan, program, NG4, uh, new bird? So what is it? What excites you about it? Yeah. So the Thraya Next Gen system is really a transformation of the complete network and, and within the Thraya L-band system. So it's an MSS uh, mobile satellite system. So all the components in the chain of communication are being transformed, starting with the satellite. So we have a satellite under manufacture at Airbus. It is possibly the most advanced MSS satellite being manufactured there. The performance of that satellite has been spec to be very high. So things that I mentioned already, like the, we have a higher throughput. So we're about nearly three times the amount of capacity that we had in our previous system. Uh, the security features have been increased significantly. Um, and, and as I mentioned, the flexibility as well as the performance. I mean, ERP and GeoRT on the satellite is, is very high, and that is helped by our 12-meter reflector, which we believe will give us the most capable and highest performance in our footprint when it comes to band connectivity. 12-meter reflector in space? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> so how, how big is the satellite? I mean, you, you say it's, it's the biggest ever. Is it four ton, five ton uh, bird or? That is exactly right. It is four tons dry mass and, and five tons at launch. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's, yeah. I mean, it's, it sounds a bit like in relict from the past because five years ago, six years ago, we saw these, these big satellites going going up quite regularly, but these days it's very rare. And so it, it feels so good that somebody is still working on that. And we will talk about the future of, of GEO in a, in a second, but you mentioned before the services, and I want to s stick with, with that IoT, 5G, government IoT. How do you answer this challenges given to you by the growing LEO constellations? Sure. Um, so we, we believe that um, the LEO constellation, the NEO constellations, or the GEO constellation, and terrestrial fiber connectivity all have their advantages and disadvantages. And I think, you know, the, the LEO constellations will uh, fill a gap in terms of the need of some customers, especially when it comes to things like latency. But ultimately, in terms of providing the best service to the customers, the combination of these systems being there is, 
is going to give uh, all the solutions really that, that customers need. So I do see a future of, um, you know, all these systems working at the same time, providing those services uh, to customers, um, whether Geo, Mio, or Mio. Do you have plans going towards your constellations? I mean, you, you mentioned the, the student projects for, for Leo, and I mean, obviously, are the uh, Earth observation satellites are on Duasat 1 to Halifasat are, are in Leo as well. But is that something you're looking into as well? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, I think the whole industry is looking at different architectures where opportunities might be. So we do, we are looking at Leo um, constellations. We've looked at Mio constellation, uh, even Heo. Um, you know, so so we we are very aware of some particular advantages there. Uh, we haven't, um, let's say, contracted or started building a network in terms of Leo. So a lot of our projects in the pipeline are focused on Geo, but we have some some ideas that we're exploring in the leo space how do you see the future of of, of geo or in the in the geo belt i mean it's it's crowded we have the mini geos as well coming in so where is the future business there in your opinion so um i mean i think i've, I've seen geo be the most um actually dynamic in the sense in, in the recent days because i see big changes coming and this could be somewhat stimulated by the industrialization at the leo and mio levels so we do see more industrialization at the geo level meaning the a lot of manufacturers are now trying to reduce the cost of the geo spacecraft manufacturing they're trying to enhance the capabilities of future uh, geosatellites, and particularly when it comes to, to the flexibility of these satellites. I mean, traditionally, one of the biggest challenges um, with the designs, the payload designs, was the inflexibility, and obviously having a, a geosatellite which can last 20 years, you know, year one, you have a business plan, you know, year 15, <laughs> the whole world has changed, right? Mm. So, so we see, you know, it's great to see that, 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 that those changes are happening. So I'm very optimistic about the future geotechnology that is coming in the industry. So just guessing or when we talk about the future of geos, satellite servicing, reusable reconfiguration, all of that is potentially on your, on your plan. So if the, the geo was it's a satellite is in good health in the, in 20 years then you just refill it and it operates another whatever 10 years is that assumption right yes to an extent i mean we you know when we when we contract or build the satellite we i mean we have usually a mission life and then we have the fuel life and then we have a design life so once you get around the 20 years, you are reaching the limits of the design qualification of the systems. So it's it's not an easy decision at that time, but but you can make an assessment at that point in time late in the life of the spacecraft. And if if it's healthy, if your redundancies are good, then certainly an extension of life is is an option. Okay. What is Yasat's long-term plan, if you can talk about it? I mean, can you maybe highlight a few things that can we expect also under, under your uh, technical leadership there? Absolutely. Um, there are so many things in the pipeline at Yasat today, uh, some of which uh, we can you know, announce, some of which we're still working on. Um, I think certainly we mentioned the Thraya Next Gen is a huge uh, game changer in terms of the capabilities we're offering. And I, and I only managed to touch on the satellite. There's a whole new uh, service platform, a core network upgrade, as well as an introduction of approximately uh, 16 new products um, that will come on the market. And these products are going to be uh, 
supporting, you know, vehicles, maritime, uh, fixed wing, uh, rotary wing aircraft. So it's a whole portfolio of products that we hope will serve our customers much better. Uh, in addition to that, we have um, on the FSS side, we have uh, some, we're working essentially on our next gen uh, KE band satellites, which hopefully we will be launching in the 2006 timeframe. So those are going to be very interesting in terms of the technology and the new types of service that we'll be able to offer on those satellites. And we have quite a few other projects that we're working on, which we think are, are going to be interesting, but uh, I'll advise everyone to stay tuned for those. So, One step at a time. So but maybe you can allude and, and, and help us to, to understand how the um, NGS4 satellite program fits into this, this vision. I mean, maybe you can allude a bit more on these services you you just mentioned what what sounds fantastic uh and in our pre-talk you talked about high bandwidth l band or uh, connectivity what is i mean that's unseen before that's pretty cool yeah i mean the vision really is that within our coverage within our footprint of Yasa, we want to provide the most competitive most valuable highest quality services to our customers possible in, in, that, in that coverage. And this, this ranges from, like I said, all the way from L-band to A-band. So if any customer needs a solution, uh, we will be able to provide that under one roof. I mean, that is uh, the, the, the vision we have. And, and you know, doing that is, is why we're constantly upgrading our systems and improving our network capabilities. So when it comes to just to touch upon some of the uh, future products that we're providing in Alabama, um, we have new broadband products that, again, the, the, I mean, broadband and Alabama, so as broad as you can get. And uh, that is, <laughs> that is um, essentially targeting one more than one megabit per second of communication links in L-band, which is, which is very good. And that'll be provided, like I mentioned, to the vehicular terminals, uh, uh, comms on the move, comms on the pause, uh, aero terminals. And so, th so that, those are um, a specific category of products that we're, we're bringing. And like I mentioned, the data rates are the competitive aspect of that. Then we have um, we have IoT products. So the IoT products are split into two categories: government IoT and commercial IoT. So the government IoT is a very secure um, IoT product that can be fitted again on all of these platforms, and then the commercial again similar to that. And we have other interesting products like beyond line of sight for um, terrestrial links, and we have. Uh, and, and really the system, the, the beauty about the system is that it can accommodate pretty much um, any type of platform because it is so flexible. I mean, we have different channel sizes on the, on the network. We have a lot of power, we have a lot of bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So these platforms that we put on the network can keep growing or improving as time goes on. But this is a classical, classical uh, satellite telephony service that Toraya was known for for decades remain. So that's that's yes. baseline service, I yes, assume. Absolutely. I mean, we that is such an important business to us. And we will be continuing and improving those uh, services um, with our next generation system. Okay. You talked about the, the product and the flexibility, but where are your customers? Are they just Emirati customers, I think, I mean, you you have a global or satellite system and I know you have landing rights in all the countries. And um, so you have, you're talking about international customers, correct? That's correct. I mean, we have customers all over the world, hundreds of thousands of customers, uh, probably in, in every country. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> I haven't checked specifically where every communication link is, but like I mentioned, I mean, from Brazil to, um, to Australia, 
uh, that's kind of like our coverage just to get an idea. I mean, for, for whole band, it's, uh, it's, it's really West Africa to Australia kind of coming in. Um, and we, we serve customers in all those countries. How far up and or how far south you can go? Because based in the in the in the geo belt, there are obviously some physical limitations. Are so yeah. ser serving the Arctic? I see is uh, I would assume is not in your focus right now with because it's simply impossible. Correct, correct. The Arctic is a bit difficult. Um, so I would say we serve up to northern Europe, okay. and we serve down to. South Africa. Actually, you mentioned a good point that I forgot to highlight. Um, with our current network, the the coverage doesn't reach all the way to South Africa, um, but with our next gen, it will. So currently, we're you know just above uh, the South African uh, borders, but in our next gen system, we will completely cover all the way down to South Africa. So that entire continent will be covered. That sounds cool. Let's switch topics for a bit before we have to, to finish our conversation today. For us, space environments, both space sustainability are very important topics to discuss. We have the Living Planet, uh, ESA conference uh, in Bonn going on uh, last week. So how do you tackle the sustainability topics? Are you active also in this, in this field or you leave that to others? We are very active. It is, um, you know, sustainability is very important to uh, the, the, our company and, and the UAE as a whole. It's a very important subject. So we treat it uh, very seriously. Um, we put in our policies um, basically guidance to ensure that we are um, doing all we can to ensure that both in space and on the ground we're meeting those goals. So, for example, in space, it is important that we don't, you know, leave space junk. Essentially, make sure that we're deorbiting our satellites to the uh, to the correct guidance. And we also work with our UAE space and space agency quite closely to make sure that we are adhering uh, to these international standards. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't take risks uh, when it comes to putting the fuel on on the spacecraft because, you know, there's in any operator. At the end of life of the satellite, you have this um, trade-off between how much life you can have and how much risk you're exposed to in terms of creating space junk. So, so in space, uh, it's very important to us. Secondly, um, in our ground manufacturing uh, lines, we need to make sure that we're sourcing uh, sustainable materials. Make sure that uh, our partners are uh, following standard practices to make sure that we're not creating any kind of environmental damage. So the answer is yes, it is It is important to us. Great, thank you very much. My last question, what is your your own vision for the space sector in the, in the next decade? So space sector is very broad. I'm gonna narrow it down to SATCOMs. Um, because if, if you ask me space sector, we could get into sci-fi and you know, it gets a bit wild. Um, for SATCOMs, I think the next step across the SATCOMs community is going to be standardization. We need to move towards standards as was done in the personal world, meaning um, a lot of compatibility between different products, different systems, different satellite networks, because I believe that will create more value for the entire business and it will create more value for the customer, ultimately reducing costs, reducing complexity and improving the overall service. Thank you very much, Adnan, for, for this talk. Um, wish you all the best and wish our Soraya good luck with the next generation and we will follow. It's been a pleasure. Things. It's Thank been you a very much. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. For our next weeks, we have prepared for you a very full program, as you can see here. On the 1st of June, so tomorrow, we have our next Space Cafe Italy by Dr. Amagatti. We see Thales Alenia Space CEO 
Massimo Comparini. Uh, that will be in Italian. Uh, next week, we look at Israel in the 33 minutes. On the 7th, I will talk with my dad, Pariente, um, walking amongst giants, the challenges of the private space sector in Israel, working in a country with massive defense companies. On the 9th, we have our next space cafe, Moribas Vox Populi, themed who gets the orbital right of way. So one week later, um, on the 14th, my next 33 minutes will be done with Jennifer Manor of EchoStar, and then followed in this week with the next Space Cafe Scotland by the wonderful Angela Matisse. And on the 21st, we do our 33 minutes with Deganit Paikowski from Israel um, as well. So, on then in this week, we have the ELA Air Show in Berlin going on. So, we are very proud to provide a program in German language on the 24th, 25th, and 26th live from the ELA in Berlin. So, stay tuned for more. All these events are going to be online on Eventbrite. And as always, we would like to hear your feedback. So, please check in with us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on LinkedIn. Don't forget to sign up to our daily or bi-weekly newsletters. And if you like to treat yourself with something special, become a Space Watcher today to help us or help us in the supporter program. We like to thank Yasat for their support for the show today. And thank you to Adnan for this very inspiring and insightful talk our today and being our guest. Thanks again to this entire team for doing their magic are for a very smooth um, job week by week. I hope you all would stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope to see you next week or tomorrow if you speak Italian. In the meantime, visit our website or follow us on social media. And don't forget, become a space watcher. Thank you very much. <laughs>